The Food Safety Modernization Act, also known as FISMA, is transforming our food safety system by shifting the focus from responding to foodborne illness outbreaks to preventing them. Under FISMA, fresh produce is covered by the Produce Safety Rule. Depending on what type of produce a farm grows, where they are selling it to, and how much they are selling, they could be subject to the Produce Safety Rule. Farms that are subject to the Produce Safety Rule can be subject to routine regulatory inspections. In Oregon, FDA conducts farm inspections. ODA's work is funded by FDA, but it is non-regulatory. ODA's work consists of education, outreach, and technical assistance only. ODA's goal is to ensure that producers have the training and resources needed to understand and implement the rule. ODA has partnered with Oregon State University to offer education and outreach through our Produce Safety Alliance grower training classes and technical assistance via on-farm readiness reviews. On-farm readiness reviews, or OFRRs, are voluntary, free educational site visits typically conducted by ODA staff and OSU faculty. They are intended to help farm operators see where and how the produce safety rule may apply to their operation. At the conclusion of each review, the team offers tips on how the farm can best comply with the rule. This series of videos provides a snapshot of what an on-farm readiness review looks like on a small, diversified operation with an important exception. There is never an audience during an OFRR. The videos were shot at East Multnomah Soil and Water Conservation District's Headwaters Farm in Gresham, Oregon. Each video can stand alone or may be viewed separately based on your interests. When viewed together, the five-part series provides a holistic view of the OFRR. You are the experts of your farm. You know your operations, what happens day to day on it. But at this point, we want you to understand what kind of risks wild and domestic animals may pose for fresh produce. So you can think about uh, you know, why they are a food safety concern. And it's under terms of the produce safety rule and FISMA, the, the big consideration there is human health and disease-causing organisms. So animals, including humans, can spread diseases. They're carriers of human pathogens like E. coli, salmonella, and all of those other uh, pathogens. So what we want to focus on is really just trying to reduce the risk that they pose to your produce crops. So when it goes to the consumer, they're fine and they want to come back and continue to buy your, your produce. So we can think about you know, different ways that animals can spread contamination on a farm. So first of all, you can think about what types of animals are on your farm. If you have working animals or livestock on your farm operation, how you manage those can also affect your produce. And there's another group of animals to consider and I work in Eastern Oregon and over in the Boise area. We have a lot of farms kind of like a setting like this where you have this urban ag interface. You have farms right up next to neighborhoods. And what are those neighborhoods full of? Humans, <laughs> dogs, cats. So th those are kind of risks that you need to consider on your farm and how, again, you know, how do you manage the risk of any contamination happening? So if you think about ways that contamination can happen, what are the most obvious ones? Incidental transmission of animal waste in the wake of weather events like rain or windstorms or a seasonal flood. Infiltration of produce fields by wild animals like deer or your neighbor's cows. Animal waste on produce from resident or migratory bird populations. So there are a lot of different ways that these events can happen. And again, we want to think about ways to minimize it. So what would be one way to try and control wildlife from getting access to your fields? The idea is not to try and just completely eliminate wildlife from coming onto the farm because they're going to get in. 
again, we want to focus on where the sources of contamination may be and what you can do to minimize, not that the crop necessarily gets contaminated, but that you're minimizing contaminated produce from reaching a consumer. And there's nothing in the produce safety rule that says that you need to eliminate wildlife. And this is where just simply doing things like monitoring what kind of animal activity you see day to day. Which fields are most at risk? What kind of risks do you see? When do you see these animal intrusions occurring? Is it early in the growing season or is it, are they showing up right before harvest? So think about, again, you know, which is a more risky situation. The closer that produce is to the consumer, that's the period of the greatest risk. So around harvest time is definitely an important time to be monitoring stuff, but think about monitoring throughout and seeing what kind of intrusions occur, what kind of animals are there, how may that affect my produce. If we think about domestic animals, yes, you can have your farm dog, but what are you going to do to limit your farm dog's access to your fresh produce? So you think about you know, clothing getting contaminated with feces and then bringing that again to your produce farm. And so that is not a good situation to be in. So make sure you, your workers, have clean clothing, uh, clean footwear if they're working with animals in between coming to the produce farm. And one of the requirements under the produce safety rule is to do a pre-harvest inspection and look for evidence of contamination in the field, look for signs of animal intrusion. If you find some feces in the field, so identify what kind of animal it is, birds, mammals, what have you. Think about where else the contamination may have happened in the field. So it sounds, you know, it's like, Intimidating, it's like, oh, I have to go walk through the fields on a constant basis. But you're doing that activity anyway. You're out doing something in the fields every day, so make this part of your overall farm operation. Interviewing the farmer and walking the farm allows reviewers to get a full picture of on-farm activities and practices. Reviewers follow standardized, open-ended, walking-around questions as prompts to ensure that we address produce safety rule-specific issues and give the farmer the opportunity to tell the story of their operation. That way, the technical assistance we provide is targeted to the specific practices of their farm. Thank you again, Emily, for letting us come out here and see the operation and have a chance to talk with you about produce safety. You have some chickens out here in one of the fields. So tell us a little bit about what it is you're doing with the chickens. We have been working together on field rotations um, so that they are providing benefit to our farm as well. And the goal was to have them on, in the early part of the season, to have them on fields that we were going to plant later on and harvest over the winter. Mm -hmm. um, so they were adding um, fertility to those fields before we started growing in them. And then um, as the summer went on, after we started harvesting, we moved the chickens onto some fields that we had already harvested um, so that they could do some cleanup and add fertility uh, maybe for next year. The chickens themselves and their manure do pose some food safety risks. Mm -hmm. So you have them here confined in an area. Do you ever have concerns about them getting loose from their coop or their enclosure? We haven't had that problem. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. We kind of have the barn divided in half, so on one side are our field amendments and also the chicken stuff, and on the other half are like the walk-in cooler and where we do pack and that kind of thing. Okay, so, so you have those operations segregated or yeah. separated? Yeah. Okay, that's very good. 
The produce safety rule requires farms to look for evidence of contamination from grazing, working and domesticated animals, or wildlife during the growing season. If there is evidence of contamination, determine whether the crop can be harvested in accordance with the rule. You have a lot of wildlife that comes around the farm, and how are you monitoring for that? Do you do anything specific, or do you, do you just see animals about? Well, more often we see signs of animals. The monitoring just kind of happens as part of the workflow. You know, if mm -hmm. I see, like, we had coyote poop right on our row cover, so when I wasn't harvesting, I moved it off into the field edge. Okay. Um, well, when you are handling poop, like if you're disposing of some out of the field, are you, what steps do you take when you're doing that? And I'll ask you about the equipment and all of those kind of good things that you may be using. So if you dig it up, for example, do you put it in a bucket? I mean, it's usually like coyote poop or larger mm -hmm. amounts. I either use a shovel or I just put on gloves and I move it and then I wash okay. my hands. Okay, Yeah. so it's really important after you're handling it, just like if somebody's going to the restroom that you wash your hands afterwards and then either make sure that equipment doesn't come back into contact with any of your produce or that it's clean and sanitized mm -hmm. before you use it again in contact with the produce. What type of control measures are you taking with the rodents, with the voles that you have? Well, we have this trap that um, my husband has built. There are a number of different prototypes, but this is one, the one that I like the best. It's, a, it's just a box with a hole in each end. Mm -hmm. um, this flag is so you don't run it over with a tractor. And then it has just your basic snap traps inside. Um, and you don't have to bait them or anything. The voles just go in for shelter and... Uh -huh. Get snapped. Get snapped, okay. Yeah. So how frequently do you find voles in the traps or how frequently are you monitoring the traps? We don't have a standard protocol. It kind of depends on how much activity there is in the area. Mm -hmm. um, when we're getting a lot of damage, I try to check them a few times a week. Okay. But even, I mean, if I were less busy, daily would be better. Yeah. Because... Mm -hmm we can catch a lot of voles. So that's kind of the question is like, are you, you know, do you need more traps or more frequent traps to make a dent in their populations and think about that. Mm -hmm. And that's just, again, kind of one of those judgment calls about how to deal with things. Oftentimes you don't see the actual animals, as you said, you just see signs that they've been there. And the most obvious sign is often the feces. You could have, you know, them wind up right on the plant. And so if you had a situation where you had multiple people or people working at different times, you know, one option is to flag out an area, whatever you would think is an appropriate buffer around to avoid any contaminated produce getting harvested. A little bit different scenario is that you can find contamination either in a row middle, somewhere in the middle of the field, or around. And so what do you do in those kind of situations? Yeah, that's where I would probably move it. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't have to worry about tracking yep. in it or putting our crates down on. So moving it out of the field again, like you talked about earlier, would be a very good recommendation for folks to follow. Another thing to keep in mind, if you find it in the interior of the field, how did it get there in the first place? So thinking about where the animals may have come from and trying to figure out if there are other potential areas in the field that may be contaminated. Under the produce safety rule, you're not required to kill wildlife or anything like that. But again, the idea is to try and avoid having any contaminated produce 
reach the consumers. Are there any specific rules related to how, how much space you have to stake out around, like poop, yep. for example? Under the safety rule, you do have a lot of discretion in terms of that, so there are no specific buffer areas, and part of it depends on what type of poop it is and what type of crop it is. So again, if you have things like tomatoes that may be staked and above ground, finding coyote poop may not be as great of a risk as it would be for leafy greens or crops mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So you do have that kind of discretion, but again, it's good to evaluate the situation, you know, on your farm and what makes sense for you, mm -hmm. okay? On-farm readiness reviews take about two hours to complete, but are dictated by the farmer. At the close of the OFRR, reviewers summarize what they've seen. They offer up to three focus areas where the farm could be in closer alignment with the produce safety rule, share pertinent resources, and answer any questions the farmer may have. If reviewers have taken notes, these are left behind for the host farm's personal records. This video showed a demonstration OFRR in front of an audience. This is not typical. The farmer may invite anyone they would like. However, the OFRR team only shows up with two people. When the review team departs, they leave the farmer a spiral-bound OFRR manual, an ODA summary of the visit, any technical assistance resources that may be appropriate, and business cards from the reviewers. The Oregon Department of Agriculture and Oregon State University team members are available for follow-up technical assistance. If the farm is called for a routine produce safety rule inspection by FDA, the farm may request ODA or OSU to observe. This is helpful for the farm, as we may be able to provide more resources based on FDA discussion items, and it is helpful for ODA to better educate others on how the rule is being enforced. So my name is Rowan Steele. I work for the East Multnomah Soil and Water Conservation District. We are a non-regulatory form of local government that operates in Multnomah County, east of the Willamette River. Essentially what we're doing here is we are creating a space to support the development of new farm businesses. We do that by making farm land, farm equipment, and farm infrastructure available at an affordable rate. And we also do trainings around business and good stewardship farming practices. Food safety is a, is a critical component to any farm business. So the goal of all farmers is to create a product that is healthy and wholesome and is fresh and reaches their customer and they love it, it's delicious. But if farmers are making their customers sick, obviously there's a huge liability there. So food safety is especially critical in an incubator environment. We have 15 different farm businesses currently leasing land from us and growing their own um, enterprises. And so there's a lot of opportunities for cross-contamination, for miscommunications. And so our space needs to be dynamic and it needs to accommodate a lot of users. And it just makes it that much more important that not only are we setting up facilities and systems that are amenable to food safety, but that our farmers are well versed in the produce safety rule. So we decided to have an on-farm readiness review not just because we wanted to make sure that our farmers understood the law, but also because we wanted to make sure that our facilities were optimal in terms of meeting food safety standards and for our systems to be working for the farmers. Currently, all of our farmers are exempt from the produce safety rule, but a lot of them have grown their businesses quite a bit over their time here at Headwaters Farm and are closely approaching where they would become a non-exempt operation. So as they grow their business, they know what the law is. They know that they need to be keeping logs. They know that they need to be following certain practices. They need to be in compliance regardless of whether they are uh, exempt or not. So having gone through the Produce Safety Alliance training, it was really good to drive in some of the, the more important points around excluding wildlife uh, in terms of contaminated food or product in the field, in terms of bin washing and some of the other kind of 
basic steps that all farms go through, uh, but knowing what, what is in compliance and what's not. One of the things that I found most valuable is just the understanding of how important it is to have proper hand washing stations at every restroom and at every wash station. Anywhere that somebody is going to need a hand washing station, it's important to have one on site. For our farmers, what really resonated with them was understanding how they need to keep their resources like bins clean. Um, being able to go through that process and demystify what actually constitutes a proper cleaning program uh, was super helpful. That includes tools, bins, and any food contact surfaces. So another reason that it was important for us to host a readiness review is a lot of farmers do have fear around bringing regulatory entities out to the farm. And so for us as a public entity, we can use this space as a training grounds, not just for our farmers, but other farmers in the area. So it was really important for us, for our farmers to understand that Oregon's Farm and Food Safety Team is here to provide services in a non-regulatory manner that they can feel comfortable reaching out if they have questions about how to provide safe food.